Ever since I was a little kid, I've always been scared of ghosts. No, not that kind, this kind. They were unsettling to me and I knew little about them. And the fact that I had an older brother that used to make me shit my pants by locking the room with me in it while forcing me to play horror games really did not contribute that much into me getting over my fears. I don't really feel scared anymore, but now that I'm older, I want to go back to being a kid and revisit my fears to see if anything can scare me. So I went on a journey to find a horror game, a real horror game, that can actually do that. I don't feel scared of ghosts anymore, not because I question their existence, but because I think they're inferior to people. But they do have me feeling some sort of way. Come back here, you! Giggity, giggity, crabbity, giggity. So I've decided to play a lot of horror games in the future and rate them separately from a usual rating. The green is the overall rating of the game, which covers the story, the graphics, the gameplay, and the mechanics. And the red is a scale of how much it scared me. I wanted to start off with Red Out 2 since I already played the first Red Out game. You should watch it. But also because there's nothing horror scarier than an insane Asian teenage girl running at you with an axe covered in blood. I know that some of you don't know what Red Out really is. To sum it down, it's an Indonesian horror game where you use your camera and straight up brute force to exercise ghosts. You're able to do this because the protagonist, Linda, has a special power of sensing the supernatural. So we start off as a yeah. or a baddie in this game, and I thought that this girl was hotter in the previous game. Wait. Right after getting into the game, I noticed that the movement feels smooth and the game looks better than Megan Fox in her prime. Digital happiness really worked their butt off in this project because this is a massive improvement from the last game. Wait, on second thoughts, it isn't that great because, you know. So we're starting in school and we can see that people already hate us, which is a pretty accurate representation of my high school life. We go downstairs and wait, what is that? Who the f If you think the girl calling out my name like that is crazy, you clearly have not dealt with the Hello Kitty girl before. You like peeping at me, man? Okay, this man is tweaking and I really get the feeling that he really doesn't want to be disturbed. I really like how we just stay here and look for the ghost while our friend just kind of needs help. Honestly, so far, this game felt pretty great. The visual appearance of the game looked very clean and it seemed like the game was an open world, which is new for a game like this. I was expecting a lot more ghosts in general, but I continued on. Oh damn, she's even better than I thought. She could cut me into a million pieces any day. How could you guys blame me for not wanting to exercise her? I mean, look at her. It's all normal, she's just a little girl. Whoa, calm down, man. You're pretty f***ing ugly for a ghost that lives in her. Okay, so my crib is pretty small, which is kind of sad. Well, let me just get changed. Whoa, and I thought I liked the messy style more, but this is just superior. Talk about real girl power. And no, I don't mean any of that feminism bullshit. I was continuing on with the game, checking the entire map just to see the feel of things. And it looked promising. I kept seeing bikes drive by and got overly curious. Wait, does it hurt me if I... Oh, yeah, okay, that does. I was hoping to see some cars drive by as well for some, well variety but this is okay too since it doesn't really have any real reason to exist other than to make the game look a little more realistic i could see that digital happiness wanted the game to have a more open feel similar to sleeping dogs which is new for me to see in a horror game i like where this game was going and i ended up in the first time okay so we're in hell i think and we still can't skip school because education is important don't skip school oh, kids, and don't do college. jobs i can definitely confirm that this is a southeast asian country because what the <laughs> are they teaching high schoolers Wait, am I stuck here? Come on, dude, get out of the way. What, you want some of this too? Oh, didn't know you were chill like that. Damn, this game really took a step forward. The combat straight up feels like God of War. Oh my god, look at all your faces. It's priceless. Let me just take a snap real quick. Slay. At this point in the game, new areas had been unlocked and I just wanted to check out the new areas. We do get a small insight into what Lisa likes, the movies, and even music bands. I also unlocked the hospital as a new location to explore, and some parts in the act just seem right. For instance, in this part, when the camera pans out, Ira along with the body bag just appears out of the blue. And I know that this is a widely used concept in most horror games, but Red Out does not use this concept often, which makes this little interaction unique. Whoa, dude, you ever heard of... I don't know pants before like bro you is not a waifu just an apron is not your deal put some clothes on dude no way this guy is gonna find me oh, that is one buff looking little girl hey man i don't want any trouble sight oh sh oh whoa, he's not dead okay i think we're good now we're going kratos on this one. Oh, so we wake up in the morgue out of all the places well hello there how are you today good sir Well, I'm just gonna go home and get some rest. 
Oh, hello. Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Sorry. Well, gotta go look for her now. Wait, you're not the mommy I'm looking for, but you are pretty tall. Nice seeing you, but I gotta go look for mommy. What were the developers thinking? Ain't no way I'm scared of her, but hey, I ain't complaining. Wait, what the f is that? Okay, no big deal. Just gotta go around you. Bitch! <laughs> Okay, we made it. Whoa, easy, buddy. I'm okay with furries, but bestiality just isn't my deal. The game already looked a lot better than the last Red Order reviewed, and it was getting a little creepier than usual. But would it be enough to make me jump while playing? And after finishing a boss fight and getting this weird man a coffee, Go I, I had another boss fight with God Mommy. And if you've watched my older video, then you know I'm not a big fan of back-to-back -back boss fights. But it was okay in this game, since the combat was actually fun and different. So I quickly wrapped up the boss fight and moved on. Okay, so we're at a creepy hotel now, and- Oh hey, another Rax. Now we're ready to go Kratos mode again. And hey, look at that, God Mommy's back. So now we gotta follow her cause I kinda wanna see where this goes, even if she is a little toxic. Much like my relationships. And taste in women. Oh, I wonder why I can never get a green flag as a girlfriend. Must be a damn problem. Also, what the f*** is that? Anyways, back to mommy. As much as I don't wanna do this, I'm having to kill her. Oh, I'm sorry mommy. I didn't know you were this crazy. I thought we had something special together, but that's just how life works. Sometimes you just have to let the other person go. I'm sorry it has come down to this, and I'll miss you. May our paths cross again someday. Wait, before you leave, can I finger skate on you? Ah, no, shit, she's dead. Well, we're in a new act now and everything looks- Wait, what are you even thinking so hard about, bro? It's the first move. Just play the London. Anyways, we move on and yeah, White is definitely winning here. What is this, 400 ELO? We travel to meet an old woman that the entire town calls crazy and instantly just trust her enough to spend the night at her place, considering our experiences with the supernatural. Yep, sounds like a great idea. Well, we're little Linda now. Our mom doesn't want to talk to us and we're playing hide and seek. And I'm seeking. I got you, got you, got you, and uh... Please don't eat me. Good news, he's on our side. Let's go back home and... Oh god, everything's on fire. Does this mean I win? Newsflash, the granny was evil. Who would have guessed? She tries to kill me, but what doesn't kill me makes me stronger. And I come back to life and... Oh, that is pretty cool and creepy i don't know which one it's my favorite ghost from the last red out game and i'm happy they included it well that's new Come here, boy! some parts of the game is really creative and i mean really creative because going on in a transition like this from one chapter to another it just felt right. You have this constant continuation in the game and it just feels right. Unlike the last game where it felt out of place. There are breaks in between since it is an open world game but also has enough action going on to not make it feel boring. Well we're at this weird abandoned house now. What could possibly go wrong? I swear it's been five minutes I came into this house and I'm already summoning transportations to a different realm. Cool I got a new sword. I know it looks like a knife but BAM it's a grower and that's exactly what she's Oh no, it's this girl again. Don't tell me I gotta fight Lizzo now. Never was a fan of big girls anyway. Sorry girl, you're just not my type. Whoa, this place is pretty cool. Wait, isn't this just the town we live in? The streets are flooded with blood. Wait, where's my- Isn't this my apartment? My room! What the f- <laughs> Well, I'm assuming that this is the last part of the game because of the vibe I'm getting. Okay, so I got a lot of monsters to defeat and I'm assuming that this is the last level and- Hey, I think we've met before. Yeah, it didn't really end out so well, did it? Okay, this hardly seems fair. Feels like I'm being jumped by Itadori and his friends. With this treasure, I summon. So I finished the game and I have the choice to either join the person responsible for all this or to just kill her. I played out both endings and spoiler alert, when we choose to join her like I initially did, then the game just takes us back in time when we were happy. And if we choose to punish her, then we get another boss fight and <laughs> over the entire town. Okay, so there's a lot to cover. Dreadout 2 is a massive improvement from Keepers of the Dark and from the first Dreadout game. The game is visually stunning and the characters are very sexy, complicated and well written. The game does heavily depend on you to play the first game though, so much so that they have a separate option in the menu to explain the story in the first game. However, there were some inconsistencies. I got stuck in this area because the hitbox of the monster didn't let me pass him even though I stunned him with my flashlight. They could have easily removed one bench and allowed the player to go around the room. The monster also didn't respond to me at all whatsoever after I got him out of the room. And and it looked 
kind of lost. And I don't understand the open world concept in this game. There are some urban legend spots in the game, but there are just a few compared to the entire map, which is huge. And I was expecting some optional monsters or secret bosses since it was an open world, but there just weren't any. Also, you can choose to walk, but the only part of the game this is useful is in the part where they introduce it to you. They just have no need to walk anymore because it's just slow and annoying. The developers could have made some more serious situations where it would be better to be stealthy. Linda's phone also has the contact option and the messaging option, which I don't even know why is a thing because they're both always unavailable. This part of the forest kept repeating itself because the developers didn't plan on the player exploring too much, so I had no choice but to go where I was supposed to. If it's too much to add details, just don't make it accessible. It was also pretty obvious that the game was teleporting me backwards because of this obvious cut. And fighting in the last boss fight was just straight up annoying because of these sharp tentacles that kept attacking me from the ceiling. And there was no way to cut it off. Meaning that there were a lot of monsters, but just a very small amount of room I could navigate through the combat. The alternate ending of Linda going back in time is okay, but the ending where we choose to kill Miss Siska just doesn't make a lot of sense. It would be okay if there was another game in the making, but Jedha 2 is the last one. But all of this is just me being nitpicky over the little things. The developers did an amazing job in improving the game from its former counterparts. And the best addition to this whole game was the new flashlight stun and a new combat weapon. Redout is unique in its sense of combat using just a camera, but it can get pretty boring if that's all we can do. So a new addition made it feel a bit more fresh. The story of this game is amazing as well. Linda continues her life to hunt Miss Siska down, all the while defeating her evil self, and while showing us more insight as to how people react to Linda's new power. Overall, I'd give this game a 6 out of 10, a 4 point reduction being due to inconsistencies and a bad ending. On a scary scale, I'd give this game a 3. I mean, it just kind of speaks for itself. If you guys want me to play a horror game of your choice, just comment down below and if you want to know more about Dreadhouse franchise and story, then I suggest you check out these videos. Subscribe. <laughs>